got a leaking garbage disposal here. I'll show you how to replace it. This particular kind of garbage disposal, I see these wear out tends to be a lot faster. There's two different kinds of styles of garbage disposals. One where it's got a threaded end like this. I seem to not have very much luck with these. They seem to leak a lot more on the crack. The other kind of disposal has this end here. I'll show you how that gets hooked up. Anyway, we gotta unplug our plug here. Undo our disposal drain line. Carefully, there's usually some water left in the line there. We're going to replace this piece with what's called a tail piece. It looks like this instead. It's got this flanged end that we can stick our rubber gasket up against and link that to our disposal. I usually use my knee to lift this up and then turn these locking plate out. Now we can move the disposal down, like so. Our cord's not in bad shape, we can reuse it. This one, the cord has already partly come out. Usually this gets locked in underneath, but it looks like someone didn't bend the second tab out underneath this portion. Once you put this in, then you have to bend this tab out. For our purposes, it's just going to make it easier to do a new one. Looking at my cord here, everything looks in good shape. No breaks in the insulation, so I can reuse this here. Pop our top off here. There's our neutral. Oh, and there's the hot. It's already apart there. new disposal. Since we're hooking up a dishwasher line, we've got to knock out this knockout right here. Just use my flat blade of my screwdriver and a hammer and knock this in here. And make sure I retrieve my piece here. And if you look inside the knockout hole now that we just did, you can see a ridge around the inside these little burrs. What we want to do is take a flat blade knife and just rotate it inside and take that edge off so that it doesn't leave a place for food to hang up. And this is a often cause of the disposal drain line getting clogged. Well, one little more little burr here. All right, nice and clear now. And then we're gonna take up our pigtail. Take off our access plate here. ground screw. When you're facing the outlet, the hot is on the right side, generally. So you can follow the right side of the cord all the way back to here. So this one is going to be my hot. So we're going to feed the wires into our disposal port here. I'm just going to hook up my hot so we don't forget which one's where here. Twist these together a little bit. And use our wire connector. Here's our neutral. And now our ground. Hook up our ground. And then I'll show you how this deal fits in here turn it this way so that we have access to the prong that's not bent yet. See, we put the bent end in first and then push this side in like so. And then we're going to insert our screwdriver in underneath here and bend the tab out so that they can lock it into place here. And that protects the wire from rubbing against the sharp edge of the sheet metal. Here's our plate. Now we're ready for action. Now back to up here, our plumbing deal. 
we can't use this end here. We might get away with it for a couple days, but it, eventually it's going to leak. What we need to do is convert it to our tailpiece, which is right here. We need this flanged end. Up. Just remove this side, and we're going to reuse these on this end. We're going to slip this on here, and we can jump this part right here, this rubber gasket. But it's important we want the gasket to seat up against the edge of the uh, tailpiece flange. And we're going to slide our deal here, like so. Now we may have to trim this end a little bit, depending on the space that we have here uh, to the disposal. There we go. So we're going to slide that on there. Now once again, I'm going to use my knee to lift the disposer up and lock it into place. Sometimes I can just lift it with my hand. And sometimes I just use my knee underneath it to hold it. That way I got two hands free. And I can also put some leverage in if I need to. So we rotate these pieces in. You know, sometimes if these are really stuck there, we if you're trying to take it off, you can insert your screwdriver into these parts and pull it over. But I find usually I'm able to, to just undo it here. So I'll re-hook up my disposer line. And, uh, I should peek in here that this is clear. There's not a whole bunch of gunk and stuff in there. Now here you don't want to tighten this clamp down too tight. Just nice and snug. Quarter turn past tight is good. The reason being the uh, seam for the disposer goes right through the middle of the uh, disposer drain line port and if you tighten this down too much it can crack it. So now for our tailpiece to see how it fits in here. It looks like we're going to need a trim just a hair off maybe. Let's see. Nope. Oh, we're going to be okay. So this side is just nice and easy. Slip joint plumbing tightens the beveled washer uh, inside there to seal the ends. And this side uses a compression fitting. Well, they're both kind of compression fittings, but, but anyway, you get the idea here. plug our cord in. We want to get it off the ground so we want to loop it over the uh, drain line. That way it's not hanging in any kind of water or anything like that. There we go. We got my mess down here. Now we're ready to test it out. And we can field test it for any weeks here. Beautiful. No leaks here. And the better way to test it is to do what's called a pressure test. Just take your plug and plug the drain line, let the sink fill up, turn the disposer on, and then pull the drain plug. And that'll force the water through extra fast. And any, even any little pinhole leak will show up so we can prove that we don't have any leaks down here. Turn on the disposer on. Set. Good to go.